we are seated, rolling the shoulders, and then take hold of your yoga block or your cushion and use it as a pillow if necessary. Come onto the back, sorry, come onto the side body. Um, like I said, cushion might be even nicer. Come onto your side body, laying now as I am on my left side hip and bring the head onto the cushion, right hand on your hip, just stack the knees, just comfortably lying on your side. And then just begin to roll that top hip. Maybe your top arm comes over the head, maybe you leave that right top arm in front of that belly. Let yourself just feel the femur bone inside that hip socket. You can even take your hand, Claire, onto the knee and start rolling in that way. Just letting it stir as you find some mobility in that hip. And then reach that leg up. You can point or flex the foot. You can even keep that knee bent and stir the ankle. Make sure you're lying on your side this is a good pose for a yoga belt. Yeah, so if you've got your belt ready, hook it around the ball of the foot. Slide the leg up towards the sky and see if you can open out. And can you settle in? Can you settle in? Just let your breath guide you through and a comfortable opening in that hip and the groin and also for more experienced practitioners of course we might just reach up towards the toes or interlace the first and second fingers between the big toe and the second toe and just let the leg fall towards the side of the torso like i said it's okay to bend the knee and straighten the leg Bend the knee, and it's even okay not to hold with a belt or with the hand. So letting that happen in as many ways as feels comfortable for you. Let breath travel through you comfortably. And then roll onto your back body. Again, you can retain that cushion if you wish, or slide it out of the way. Send the spine into comfortable length. And just let each thigh open out into a really relaxed butterfly pose. As the thighs open out, you can hold the outside edges of the thighs and then gently draw them back in. So both thighs open out softly, supporting them with your hands, or of course you could have your two yoga bricks here. Exhaling and drawing the thighs back to that midline. Breathing in to open. Exhaling to draw back. If this is feeling too demanding on your hips, then simply let one thigh open at a time. Let it open out, just like the yoga tree pose. Calmly sense the body grounded, shoulder blades melting from the ears. Rolling back into centre when you're ready. And maybe again, letting the other hip and thigh open singly. And drawing the knees back into centre. So, folding the thighs now into your chest, curling into Apadasana, and releasing back down. We can have a lovely arm overhead stretch here as well. So as you take the arms overhead, feel the ribs expand, lovely deep breath in, and then exhale and curling into Apadasana. So keep going with arms overhead and supine curl. I've seen someone else pop up on the screen. Hi Barmini, I hope you can also join in with some of these poses on this newcomer, me, to Facebook Live this evening. And bear with, I've got the phone horizontally in the, um, in the tripod and I'm really hoping that works for you viewing this. But I'll find out afterwards. Okay, so 
Coming in again to that overhead arm position. Exhaling to curl. And then press your arms down on the mat and roll your spine to sit. And one of the lovely ways we can do this in yoga is to cross the ankles and then as you roll, what happens is if on a good day you'll come up to sitting cross-legged. So bring obviously opposite hand to foot with the ankles crossed and then scoop and roll and come back up to sitting cross-legged. And if you didn't come to sitting that way, it's absolutely fine. Just now come to sitting. And once again, if you prefer to sit on your yoga block or cushion, slide that under the pelvic sit bones and allow yourself to stack. Shoulders above hips, crown lengthening, easeful moment in the body. It's always lovely to side bend, especially after a day at the desk or a day at work or even a day of relaxation. As a functioning human in active daily living, we don't always side bend. So start to flow left and flow right. And remember that you might need plenty more. You also might want to change the angle of your side bending. So notice here that I'm bringing my palm just kind of slightly in front of my knee and lengthening out through the body that way. And this is a lovely way of experimenting and exploring. So coming to your yoga mat, coming to your Pilates mat, always with an inquiring mind. Now I'm gonna jump up again because I need double vision if I'm gonna see who's joining me today. And Leslie's here. Good afternoon, Leslie. Thank you so much for coming in. So seated side bending is happening. And then we're coming to the second side of the side line hip opener. So taking hold of that pillow block or your lovely scatter cushion. And now laying onto your right hip. By the way, if you've got a yoga belt, have it available. If you haven't, please don't worry. So lifting into this top hip rolling the top hip. Doesn't matter if your movement is tiny and small, what really matters more is that you feel a sense of flow motion with the body, with the breath, and your hip is meeting with some of this circular action. And when we're laying on the side, we're, we're quite heavily grounded through the buttock and the side body and the weight of that pelvis. So you're, you're just attempting to isolate movement in to the hip socket. Sometimes when we're laying on the back and we're doing hip circles, we start really rolling the pelvis around a lot. I'm not saying that's wrong, but try to bring awareness in and then begin to lengthen the leg. You can lengthen it up and bend it. You can lengthen and bend, but essentially aiming at some point to either reach the leg up and hold the foot and leg, or to loop your belt around the, the, the foot sole or the ball of the foot and reach the leg to a comfortable place. Remember this bottom leg is bent, so again, your range of motion is your own. When you have settled wherever it is, with or without prop, holding your trouser, holding your belt, maybe close the eyes and rest, just rest here, resting into the heart of the posture. Feel the facial muscles soften. Really feel able to open up, not just the hamstrings, but those inner groins. Maybe you'll even feel this in the lower leg. Maybe one more round of breath, but when you feel contented and satisfied with that so far, draw yourself up over onto all fours. I'm just gonna to toss these out the way for a moment. And as best you can, widen out your knee 
knees gently, big toes touching, and then release your elbows down. Now, commonly in open swan pose, we might also feel compelled to reach the arms forward and let the chin or the forehead touch the mat, yeah? But notice what feels right for you as you press some of that weight back into the groins and then surrender to something more or less comfortable. Why would you surrender to something less comfortable? Well, of course, because yoga says that when we are touching upon some discomfort on the mat, it's a way of bearing and, and let's say developing or cultivating more resilience for the kind of challenges that we meet in our everyday life. So let yourself nuzzle in, a little bit of movement round those hips by that pelvis, a little bit of swaying, and then slide in to whatever feels right for you. And as you breathe in and breathe out now, really expand the rib cages. On the exhalation, bearing weight down towards those inner groins, opening out those thighs. Please do not cause discomfort to your knee joints, of course. One more round of breath here in an open swan. And then step up through the hands and into all fours. Draw the shoulders back, so a firm all four position. And then as you curl your left hip and thigh up towards the sky, just going as high as feels comfortable. Notice a breath in and out, and then get ready for Vyagrasana, the tiger pose. So on the exhale, rounding the spine, bringing the knee towards the face, breathing in as if the back of the foot touches, touches the back of the skull. Exhale, rounding. Breathing in to flow hip away from pelvis. Exhale, drawing hip into flexion, and then circling that pelvis in between. Before we do the other side, give yourself a good nourishing circle of hips, pelvis, and torso. <sighs> now and again, let out a big sigh through the mouth. <sighs> I am really hopeful that this Facebook Live video has worked for you. Uh, I won't know till the end. Let's begin the second side of Tiger Pose. Curl the right hip and thigh up and out. Inhale as you exhale. Draw that knee in towards the face. Breathing in, curl away. It's quite a strong back bend. Push the earth away. Stay strong and determined in your all fours. And then release back into extended child's pose. So arms come forward, buttocks reach towards the feet, lengthen those arms forward. And as you rise up and bring the arms up above the head, high kneeling, sweep the hands round into prayerful and step your right foot forward and slowly release the pelvis down. So nice deep exhalation as you release that pelvis down. Take the hands to frame that right foot and draw the hips back, rounding or folding over that right leg. Breathing in, low lunge, and you can lift, of course, your shoulders higher above the hips. Make sure that right foot is really well grounded, spread out through the toes, and gradually let those hips soften down. Allow breath to occur. You can support your body, of course, with hands framing the foot. You can use your yoga block. You can bring your block in and just be in a little bit of a higher position. You can keep your hand on the block as you draw the pelvis back and moving into your half pyramid, yes? Yeah? So think of some of the ways you want to create a bit more accessibility for the benefit of the practice. 
going into that lower lunge. Those of us that want to, we'll bring that block or the hands around on the inside of the right foot, slide the elbows down and move into lizard. So both hands are on the inside of the right foot. I quite like swaying in this pose. I just feel sometimes that I want to send some happy messages to the hips. That even though some poses in yoga are quite intense, sending that message that it's going to be okay, it's going to be fine. Just got to breathe through it. Got to know that my body really thanks me for showing up as it thanks you. Okay, let's press away, release that leg back. Come and stack the body again into high kneeling. Bring the palms into the heart and sweep the arms overhead. Let's salute the sun, it is out there. It's been a glorious Easter. Exhale into the heart. Breathe in, open chest. Let your spirit soar. Exhale into the heart. One more. Sweep those beautiful arm circles into your glorious heart. I feel very passionately about allowing everyone to age in a body they can rely on, to really find safe, effective movement so that you feel very joyful and confident when you come to my classes and just as joyful as I do in sharing my passions with you. So let's get ready. I'm going to step the left foot forward, grounded through the feet, and then gradually lower that pelvis and then come back up again. Maybe you feel you need a little bit more of this folding in, yeah? Hands down by the side. So if we take the pelvis back, lovely super transition between low lunge and half pyramid. And meanwhile, your right hip and thigh, when you just sit into that deep Ashwa Sanchalasana and the low lunge, that deep right thigh is opening out. Yeah? So I'm going to swap sides, just so maybe you can see a little bit more of that space coming through that right hip. Especially when we bring the hands on the inside of the left foot, See how this right knee moves further up, now hit my wall. See how that right knee moves further back and then you bring your elbows down <sighs> on a good day. A little bit of swaying and find the pose Uttam Prishtasana, the lizard. So palms press under the shoulders, almost plank like in the torso with that left thigh open. A little bit of that rocking if you can bear. You won't have your foot pressed and jammed into the wall behind you. I swear my limbs are getting longer. All this studio is getting smaller. <laughs> How can that happen? So let yourself sway. Maybe you're down here and you've managed to get one elbow down. Yeah? Please don't hurt your knees. They are precious, delicate joints. No, they're not delicate, but they need to be better designed, don't they? Relaxing. Take a little while longer if you can. And then press up in a way. And oh, up, uh, eat. <laughs> Sometimes it feels a bit like that, doesn't it? It feels a bit creaky. Let's grab the yoga block again. Or your cushion. And as you park, literally, park your sit bones on the edge of your block or cushion. Open out those thighs, let the outside feet, so coming onto the outer edge of the feet, let the outside feet really become stable in the mat and open out these thighs. So this is like um, lotus blossoming pose. It's also another way of finding this one. It's another way of finding malasana, that seated squat, but without having to flex those knees quite so powerfully. Okay, so wide open groins and circle your torso. Ah, just know that nature 
has lots of spirals in it. In Mother Nature there's lots of spirals. In plants, in our human animal body. Now we want to get that circulation going around the trunk. Maybe you need to go a little bit more side to side. So let everything stir around. And then fold outer edges of feet together. It doesn't have to be that you draw them in this close for butterfly. It can be a little bit further away. And let's finish by bringing the hands behind the body and laying that chest open. Let again, a little bit of rocking and swaying happen. <sighs> Lovely to put some cushions, by the way, under either side of those thighs, I know. And as you draw yourself up to sitting, nice deep breath in. As you exhale, bring the hands to heart or even consider a light bowing. Giving thanks to your body, your breath, your mind for coming in to this Facebook Live and to helping me because um, I cannot work successfully in my passions if I don't have you as my inspiration. So have a super evening. Thank you so much for being here and please give any feedback below and I will learn from that too. Thank you. Bye bye Claire, bye bye Mimi, bye Leslie. Take care.